Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this short game to video, we're going to be discussing the Zen 2 processor from AMD. At the next Horizon event, the company divulged a lot of information concerning these CPUs, including, of course, the next generation Epic processor known as Roam. So in this video, the idea is to go through all of the officially released information, along with the rumors and leaks as well, just to catch everyone up. Because I realized that we've talked about so many different topics regarding Zen 2, it's probably difficult for everyone to kind of get a good handle exactly where we are in terms of the rumors and the information. So I figured that this is going to act as like a brief. How by no means are we going to go through every single piece of information? I did do a quite in-depth analysis of the Next Horizon event, which I'm going to link in the description of this video if you want a full breakdown of that, uh, simply because obviously otherwise this video is going to end up rather lengthy. But I want to go over the major talking points. We're going to start things out with the official information, which of course, once again, was uh, released from AMD themselves. And then we're going to go into more the rumors and the speculation. So without further ado, let's begin. The Zen 2 processor cores are developed using TSMC's 7NM process. AMD did evaluate 10NM, but came to the decision that 7NM was the better choice. They claim that 7 nanometers will deliver twice the density and 50% of the power consumption if they target the same level of performance. Or, if they decide to go for the performance route, they can expect 25% better performance while consuming the same power. Now, this is actually slightly different at the Next Horizon event compared to that of Computex, where that particular event, AMD had said that uh, 7NM would deliver up to 35% better performance. But do remember that the CPU cores a 7nm, but the actual I.O. controller, which is in the middle of the chip, is still built using 14nm. According to AMD, uh, there's not much scaling there for going 14nm, and it would basically just increase uh, the cost of production without really giving any benefits. There are several details AMD have provided regarding the actual changes to the architecture itself. Improved branch predictor and better instruction prefetching should allow the CPU to better be able to guess the way that code is going to branch. For example, if or then or else structures which are present in a lot of modern code. This combined with in better instruction prefetching should allow the pipeline of the CPU to be better fed, which of course is crucial for ensuring that the actual execution units don't have large stalls in them and that they are always kept busy. AMD have also stated they've increased the size of the micro op cache, but have not specified the exact amount. From memory, the original Zen architecture had 2048 entries, but once again, we don't know how much they've increased that by for Zen 2. So all of this is because the actual pipelines themselves, the execution units, have been seriously beefed up, particularly the floating point units. AMD have beefed the load and store data paths from 128-bit to 256-bit wide, and now this means that the FPU is capable of receiving two loads from the load and store unit, up to 256 bits compared to 128 bits. If you're wondering what all of that means, in combination with that, plus execution units themselves being 256-bit wide, this means that a 256-bit AVX operation will no longer need to be broken into two separate 128-bit uh, micro-ops. So basically all of this is to match Intel's Skylake uh, processors. When it comes to AMD's Roam platform, the company are, of in course, increasing the number of processor cores and threads. They are doubling it compared to the previous generation. So now we see 64 cores, 128 threads per socket, which is obviously pretty darn impressive. The number of PCIe lanes remains consistent compared to the previous generation, but they are still drastically increasing the bandwidth available for I.O. They're doing this by raising the PCIe standard from PCIe 3 to PCIe 4, which effectively doubles the transfer rates from 8 GTS to 16 GTS. And we still have 8 DDR4 memory channels, which means up to 4 terabytes of RAM per socket 
which is pretty damn impressive indeed. We also see Infinity Fabric 2, and according to AMD's own slide, we see 100, gig 100 gigabytes per second link for GPU to uh, GPU bandwidth, and when it comes to the CPU to GPU, uh, it's 64 gigabytes per second bi-directional. There are a lot of questions, of course, on how this relates to Ryzen 3000. We certainly don't know if AMD are planning to increase the core count. The rumors right now are that Intel are considering upping their uh, core count 10 for their mainstream processors, but whether this has any bearing on what AMD are planning for Ryzen 3000 remains to be seen. We should also quickly talk about IPC. This has been confirmed by AMD that we could be seeing up to 29% improvement IPC. So that's quite a large jump instructions per clockwise compared to the previous generation. But all is not as rosy as it might sound there. The reason behind this is because that that is best case scenario. So while it is a realistic workload, it is not like a synthetic benchmark necessarily, but it will be best case optimized workloads that would really push floating point performance and therefore of course really hammer the processor in a very specific way and therefore is not going to exactly be how all workloads are going to scale and most likely we will see considerably less IPC for the average application. I'm also going to touch briefly on the IO die and its function. AMD have been somewhat cagey exactly how it functions and the overall layout and connectivity of the IO die. There is some theories that it could be used in several ways, including, for example, uh, GPUs within the um, processor in the future, but obviously AMD have not confirmed whether this is the case or not. So now on to the rumor side of things. Once again, this stuff has not been confirmed by AMD. So if it turns out to be incorrect, well, you know, it is a rumor. So regarding the IPC, a moment ago I said that officially up to 29% has been confirmed by AMD, but it has also been suggested by numerous leaks and sources that the reality is it's going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 10 to 15% IPC gain, which is not too shabby. Of course, 10 to 15% does depend upon the workload along with the generation of Zen that they are comparing it against. After all, Zen Plus has a slight IPC gain over the original Zen. Either way, it's pretty good, and that combined with the uh, AVX changes that I mentioned a moment ago should mean it's very Intel-like in terms of the performance we see. Of course, that doesn't mean much without the clock speed information, and that's where things get a little dicey. According to yet another leak, we've seen up to 2 gigahertz for the 64-core uh, 128 thread uh, Epic processors, based upon ROM, of course, but it is A, an engineering sample, and B, that is a lot of processor cores. So that does not necessarily equate to, you know, a mild clock speed bump for the uh, Ryzen 3000 series. In fact, other rumors do tell us that it's around the 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz mark that AMD themselves are targeting. And that does somewhat fall in line with what we've heard from TSMC at the Next Horizon event. Of course, this does depend heavily upon the number of processor cores that AMD are going to be uh, targeting for the Ryzen 3000 series. For example, what they could do, and this is speculation on my part as a pure example, they could release a 3800X, which has a slightly lower clock speed, but has, let's say, 12 processor cores or 10 processor cores. And then they could release, let's say, a 3700X, which has a slightly higher clock speed, but, of course, fewer CPU cores. So you can choose your, you know, poison there. There is also the rumors concerning the level 3 cache. Uh, it is being reported uh, by Sysoft Sandra as 16 times 16. So 16 megabytes times 16, of course, representing the number of compute units or CPU clusters on the actual processor. The problem is, A, it's well a 
engineering sample processor with a version of Sysoft Sandra that probably is not reading it correctly. That's for A, so it may just completely and utterly be wrong. The second thing is that we are also unsure exactly how the uh, structure of the processor itself functions. Therefore, to say that the level 3 cache has been doubled for Zen is not necessarily uh, accurate. And we also have to remember that um, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to see the same cache configuration between uh, the EPIC series of processors along with the Ryzen series of CPUs. There could be a difference there. And of course, this is pure speculation as we don't 100% know right now. Supposedly, AMD are also working on a plethora of various chips based upon Zen 2. For example, we know that there's going to be a custom variant for the PlayStation 5, at least that's the uh, allegation that's uh, drifting around, but there's also some theories out there that there might be custom APUs available for the desktop as well, which of course will be a combination of the Zen 2 processors and most likely Navi as well. But once again, these are just whispers in the wind. In fact, and there were some rumors quite some time ago, way before the next Horizon event, that we would see some massive APUs for the use of server market. But of course, uh, this has not been confirmed and we've not seen any real major uh, pieces of information to 100% confirm this yet. So just, you know, take that with a grain of salt. With all of that said, hopefully you have found this video somewhat helpful and it's given you some indicators of exactly what uh, is happening regarding the Zen 2 processor. The normal stuff if you have, you can like, share, comment and subscribe to the channel because, well, that would just be spiffy and helps us out a lot. You can also find us on Patreon, which of course is linked in the description of this very video. Do know that you don't need to, of course, support us, but any pennies you do give us does help support the channel immeasurably. And you can also find an Amazon affiliate link, which if you don't want to support us on Patreon, but you happen to need to buy a new lawnmower in the winter, then by all means, if you use the Amazon affiliate link, we do get a few pennies as well, which once again does directly help the channel. With all of that said, I thank you deeply for watching the video. It is greatly appreciated and hopefully I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.